Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio. And uh, I have a very interesting question uh, by Howard, Howard Sheldon. And he is asking about uh, loudspeaker sensitivity, the heat generated by tube amplifiers, and information loss when we go for high power or with low sensitivity speakers. So I will start by reading the last part of Howard's question. Uh, no matter how powerful a tube amp, the information is lost because the sensitivity of the speaker driver is too low. Is this correct? Yes, it is correct. And uh, I would say that when uh, it, it is not a thing that uh, how powerful a tube amp uh, mm, okay, let's rewind here a bit. So before I have touched on this issue in quite a bit of detail and we had loads of discussions, Very, I had received very excellent comments and very diverse experiences with people trying out high efficiency speakers. And some of the feedback I had was uh, quite contrary. Uh, so someone has... Uh, posted the exact opposite, that, that he tried his low sensitivity speaker with higher power, he had better dynamics than the high efficiency speaker he tried at low power. And uh, this can happen, but I think that's more, uh, more of an unusual situation. And, and when you have uh, a system that is optimized for a low efficiency speaker and then you add a modern high efficiency speaker to it, then your mileage may vary. Uh, but when we go for tube amplifiers, which are uh, like short path, no feedback, so you just get the direct, uh, uh, direct driving capability uh, of, of, a, of a simple loudspeaker system. Uh, in this case, what you always get is when you have a higher sensitivity speaker added to this system, then that higher sensitivity speaker resolves a greater dynamic range compared to a lower sensitivity speaker, or we can say efficiency the same. Thing. So if we go with sensitivity, let's say uh, a, a like a, a 100 dB per watt meter system versus a 90 dB per watt meter system, driven by the same power, the 100 dB system, I mean speaker, gets you 10 dB uh, greater uh, apparent efficiency. And, and you would say that when we go for uh, into the nitty-gritty and in, into the numbers, what you see is that uh, uh, actually for the 100 dB efficient speaker, the, the lowest level all, also comes up higher. Mm, but, uh, but how the physics works out is that like around like below 20 dB or 10 dB, that level there, it, uh, it falls into your uh, room's noise floor and, uh, and basically you are experiencing a fall out at, at the lowest levels in most rooms and, 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 and all of the generic amplifiers. But when you have a really good amplifier that's capable of resolving a very the very low dynamic ranges there you can truly experience that that a high sensitivity or high efficiency loudspeaker gives you much more dynamic information than a low efficiency does and in my case that that i, I tried that out exactly by placing the lagrons left here uh, or the voice of Lancelot to the same amplifier and, uh, and namely my Ampex and then really the 
uh, about 13 dB efficiency difference between the two, I mean sensitivity difference, efficiency difference is a 20 fold efficiency difference, so it means that the big one gives you 20 times more acoustic energy compared to the small one with the same power. And, and there's, there's a vast difference uh, between the two. The fear that, that the, uh, the dynamic range is very different compared to running the Lagrande at the same SPL, it doesn't feel as dynamic. You don't, don't feel that difference. And, and actually the, uh, the ear is a very tricky device or the brain because if you are not used to what dynamic range is, then uh, most people will find that a slight compression will give you the uh, impression that it's, it's beefier sounding, there's more punch to it, because like uh, the, the softer bits are getting louder and everything is squeezed more together, so actually there's more, uh, I would say more energy coming to you, but but the thing is more compressed, so it, it's more mechanical, it's getting more mechanized. So the best cue how to hear dynamics is whether it sounds natural or artificial. And, and if it sounds more natural, that's a dead cue that, or a dead on cue that, that you are getting a better dynamic range out of your system. And also another cue for a better dynamic range is that you have a freedom with the volume control. So if the dynamic range provided by the loudspeaker is big enough, then you can turn the volume to very low volumes or extremely loud volumes and, and the sound will stay natural and, and the sound stage will not collapse. And, uh, and I think uh, this is because um, the high sensitivity or high efficiency speakers, they translate more of the signal into acoustic energy. And, and when you look at the physics, you look at the mathematics, if you just look at the mathematics, then it, all, the, all it comes out is numbers. But when you look at, at, at the physics, how it really works, is that when you throw, let's say, one watt of power into the loudspeaker, then, then with those efficiencies out of those one watt of power, 0 0.1 watt gets translated into acoustic energy. So the energy moving in my room, the air in my room, is 0 0.1 watt from the big speaker if the driving power is 1 watt. With the small ones, only 50, uh, wait, 50 milliwatts, 20 times less energy gets converted to acoustic energy. So, uh, so that's the difference. So, so you think that uh, basically the difference between the two is uh, like 20 times more of the energy is getting lost. And, and it's not just energy, it's information as well, I believe. And, uh, and, and it's not, not really a belief system, so it's not, not like I'm a Jedi Knight or, or something, or, or I just, you know, dream these things up, but it's, it's an experience that what I've experienced is when, uh, uh, and this is something, an experience basis that you build up when you live with ultra-efficient loudspeaker that is a properly designed ultra-efficient loudspeaker, and driven by a system that's optimized for an uh, ultra-efficient loudspeaker. If the system is not optimized for an ultra-efficient loudspeaker, it will sound quite poorly and, 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 and the dynamics will even sound more compromised compared to a, a medium uh, efficiency loudspeaker. Uh, but when you have a system that's optimized for it, then you will notice very easily and it's not a belief, it's, it's just an experience that when you put another speaker with lesser efficiency, then there is less information coming through from that system. Now, 
one way that people try to combat this thing is just throw more wattage on your driver but uh, no i don't think when we throw more wattage you get the same information because when you throw instead of one watt you throw 20 watts then what you need to do is you need to amplify the signal 20 times more and when you amplify it 20 times more you introduce more than 20 times more the distortion what your amplifier is giving to the system why i'm saying more because the amplifiers as we ramp up the power demands the the distortion the alteration that the amplifier does to the sound increases i would say exponentially now we have figures thd figures from manufacturers which say the exact opposite that oh i measure the thd ah, thd is not worse but what those figures are not telling you is uh, what is the information loss that we suffer by ramping up the energy and there is no uh, no data on that because all the THD and, and all, the, all these distortion figures apply for peak power output. So the THD on the peak power output when we ramp, go higher, higher, that's what we are measuring. And we are not measuring what, what happens uh, in, the ultra, in the low signal level. So when we have the, the peak and compared to that, the, the softer bits, what are doing in relationship to the big one? So as we are ramping up the uh, output from the amplifier, we are really uh, getting rid of the low level information. And that's why it is really crucial, it's really mandatory to keep the power output of the amplifier as low as possible. Uh, just think about tube amplifiers and when you read it that uh, there is like class A tube amplifiers it means that they draw a steady current draw from the power supply and, uh, and actually that's only true below a certain level and it's not like suddenly like a class A or no class A but within class A there is like vast differences and, and the lower the power output, the deeper you are in class A. So if your amplifier is tasked, your tube amplifier is tasked to put out, like, let's say like 100 milliwatts of power peak tops, then it's like the entire region, even the loud bits are super deep in class A. And, and that's hap that happens with an ultra efficiency speaker and then the entire information you are getting is with a rock solid power supply source because your power supply is not taxed and your tubes are operating under optimal conditions and when you go for a lower sensitivity speaker then your uh, one thing your speaker is unable to to extract the the full amount of the information contained in the signal is, is just they can extract just a, a tiny piece so for example if you have a 92 db uh, sensitive loudspeaker 92 db per watt meter not the bogus 2.73 volt yeah they are system uh, watt meter system that means that the loudspeaker can resolve one percent of the energy of the amplifier into acoustic energy into actual sound ah, i think i'm getting over complicated uh, with this answer and i'm just trying to tackle too many things at once but but the but the question is really about loads of things and then this was just kind of like a mishmash hodgepodge about uh, throwing some ideas together on uh, on loudspeaker sensitivity and and what and it's not just the loudspeaker that's that's the the limiter for the information content uh, that it can resolve but also the amplifier 
So if the amplifier is allowed to operate only as little power as, as needed, then that tiny power is much cleaner than, the, than, than a lot of power demand. So when we have a more efficient loudspeaker, then it resolves more of the signal. So even the big one, if, if let's say there's a one watt uh, energy coming, in, like information packet of one watt is coming, it can only resolve 0.1 watt. And that's already uh, ultra efficient, but it's just 10% efficient. It's, it's really like if we use any other system than loudspeakers, just getting 10% returns is nothing. But, but just it tells everything about the state of audio today that even 10% efficiency is considered ultra efficient. And 1% and efficiency is already considered high efficiency. So, yeah. So I think that's it. But there's another part of the question about the amplifier heat. And uh, that, that's for another video. Uh, because that's also a big subject. And if you were wondering, in case I have a Kintaro with me. Yeah, so he's purring. Maybe, can you hear him? I think maybe you, you should be able, because I have the microphone here. But I think he just quieted now. Maybe if I rub his shoulder blades, then he will start purring. Yeah, he's purring very, very softly. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up or not. I think I have to repeat it when, when he purrs louder, because he can purr very, very loudly. And uh, I think it's, it's time to give uh, his uh, back rub. He really loves his shoulder blade being rubbed. And he hasn't received the shoulder blade rub yet today. So it's time for his shoulder blade rub. And uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to continue rubbing his blades. And then <laughs> we can... Uh, Actually, we have dinner, and um, yeah, so I think he, he came to remind me to go to the kitchen because there's something waiting for me. So, bye-bye, uh, have an awesome day, everyone.